Hi, welcome to our video on factoring quadratics where the a term is bigger than 1. So to figure out what's happening here, we're going to work backwards. Let's pretend we already factored out a quadratic and we have the factored pair and it's something, let's say 2x plus 3 times x plus 4. And again, the goal is to pretend we've already solved it and use that information to understand how this factoring works. Instead of memorizing a formula, I'm going to work backwards and then I'm going to use that um, to look for any patterns that might help me understand what's happening here. So, uh, assuming we've already solved this quadratic and factored it, let's redistribute the 2x multiplied by x and 4 and expand this to see what the original quadratic was. So what's 2x times x? Well, that's just 2x squared. 2x times 4 is just 8x. And now I'm going to distribute the 3. I'm going to multiply it by x and 4. So what's 3 times x? Well, that's 3x. What's 3 times 4? That's 12. And now we simplify. We want to combine like terms. I can add the 8x and 3x, and I get 11x. And then I still have my 2x squared, okay, and my 12. Now, since we have the original quadratic, let's look at this to see what happened. Typically what we do with a simple case of a quadratic is say, okay, what factors of 12 of the C term add up to 11 to be the B term? But here you notice there are no positive factors of 12 that add to 11. You'd have to add something like negative 12 uh, and 1 or 12 and negative 1 to get positive 11. But here, that's not going to work because the middle terms, if you notice, the 8 and the 3, well, these two factors that we add up here should have come from 12. But 8 times 3 is not 12, is it? What is 8 times 3? Well, 8 times 3 is 24. So in this case, we found two factors that multiply to 24, but that also add up to 11. What's going on here? Why is this happening? Well, I think you might notice that 24 is just 12 times 2, right? 24 is 12 doubled. So instead of looking at the number 12 and the factors of 12 that add up to 11, we ended up looking at factors of 24 that add up to 11. Why is that? Well, I think the key is, of course, the A term, right? In this case, A equals 2. So when we have an a term that equals 2, and we try to factor it out, when we distribute that a term, at some point, you multiply by x, and then you're going to multiply by one of the factors. But 2x times 4 doubles 4 and gives us 8. So essentially, this a term, when we factor out, doubles one of the factors. So sure, originally we have factors of 4 times 3 and that equals 12. But when you have an a term, you end up doubling one of the factors. So this 4 becomes an 8. And what's really 8 times 3? That's 24. Right? We're doubling one of these factors, and that doubles the number that we're looking at. OK, so, so how do we deal with all this? Well, when you're dealing with a problem where the a term is bigger than 1, what you can say to yourself is not what does what factors of c add up to b, but what factors of a times c add up to b. That's the, that's the key here. So in our case, since a is 2 and c is 12, we look at a times c, or 2 times 12, which is 24. Then we say, what factors of 24 add up to positive 11? And then we're basically done. Except, of course, look at, look at this. When we factor out, you can't just say, oh, the factors of 24 are 8 and 3, and then you have 2x, right, x, and then you plug in just 3 and 8. That's not what's going to happen here. Because if you look at this, it's not the same as our factored term here. And if you to expand this, you'd realize that you get 2x squared plus 16x plus 3x plus 24. It would be a different quadratic. So what's the next step? Well, once you find the two factors that multiply to AC and add up to B, so in this case that 8 and 3 multiply to 
12 times 2 or 24 and add it to 11, you have to remember that since you doubled all this, you have to half one of the terms so that when you add up later and multiply, when you multiply later, you don't get 24. Because if we leave 8 and 3, right, 8 is uh, 4 doubled. So 8 times 3 will give you a C term of 24, but our C term is 12. So the last key is that when you factor this out, pick one of the terms to half. So in this case, I know that I need 8 times 3 to get 24, but I know that one of these have to be halved back to 4, so that when I multiply 4 by 3, I get 12. All that comes together to say, oh, well, when we factor this out, we're going to get 2x plus 3, we'll leave 3 alone, but then x plus 4, and we're done. So we know this is going to work. Why? Because, well, 2x will double the 4 and give us 8, and that will help us add the 3x and get 11. And 3 and 4 multiplied in the end will give us 12. And that's kind of the intuitive process. Let's look at another example. What if we have 2x plus 4 and x plus 5, and this is our answer, and we want to work backwards? Well, first we need to distribute the 2x, right? 2x times x, and then 2x times 5. 2x times x is 2x squared, plus 2x times 5 is 10x. Then we distribute the 4. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 5 is 20. And we get our original quadratic. We just combine these two terms. We get 14x. 20 is still there. Okay. And 2x squared. There's our original quadratic. So let's just look again about at how this works, because we know that c equals 20, but a times c, 2 is a, times c, 2 times 20, equals 40. So the b term is 14, so a is 2, b is 14, and c is 20. So our goal now that we have this a factor greater than 1, we want to look at factors a times c that equal b. So a times c is 40. And what factors of 40 add up to 14? Well, I have no idea. Let's look at factors of 40. First, we have 10 times 4. Oh, and there it is. 10 times 4 equals 40. But 10 plus 4 equals 14. So what does this mean? Well, it means that these are the two factors we need to add up to our b term. But one of them needs to be halved so that when we multiply them, right, we get 20 because 10 times 4 is too large. So when we factor this out, we have our 2x here, x, and typically that's always my approach here. Uh, I put the larger coefficient in the first parentheses, and I, you know, whatever this term is, if I can, I try to factor it out into um, the number itself just times x. So it's, if it's 2x squared, I just try to split them to 2x times x, and I write those in first. Everything's positive, so I'm going to be adding. And now what do I do? Well, I can half either term, right? Um, but what makes the most sense to me is to put the 10 halved here and put a 5, because I know later on I'm going to multiply this 2x by this number and redouble it so it adds to 14. And I put the original 4 here, right? And you can see that if I, just, if I go back to the beginning, I take 2x times x and get 2x squared. And 2x times 5, that doubles the 5 to 10x. And then I have 4x. And that gives me the 14. But the reason, again, I have the 5 is for this last step. 4 times 5 has got to be 20, not 40. Um, so that's that's the basic idea of it. And what what happens though? Let's just pretend. What if I put four here halved? So instead of reading two x plus four, it's two x plus ten, and then x plus two. Because I guess in all these steps, you might feel hesitant about what to have and what to put where. So if you have if you have this step down, you found two factors of forty that add to fourteen. Now you're like, which one do I go back in half? Well. Try both and see which works. In the first case, we tried this one and it worked. In other words, it factored out. 
We checked it and it gave us the correct quadratic. What happens here? Well, 2x times 2 gives us 4x, right? 2x times x gives us 2x squared. Running out of room here, sorry. 10 times x gives us 10x. And 10 times 2 gives us 20. Cool. So if we simplify this one, we get 2x squared plus 14x plus 20. And that also gives us the right answer. So you can test it out. And I'm not sure about this. I don't want to say it always works, but I feel pretty confident that you can half either term, either factor, and plug those into your formula, and you'll get the correct factored pair. But just to be sure, test them both out each time to make sure you're getting the right result. In the next video, we'll just work through a bunch of examples. I hope this helped.